Hello, Courtney G here. Welcome to my first ever vlog. First vlog ever, can you believe it? I know, it's so amazing. This is Donkey Brains vlog episode one. And uh, as you can see there in the menu on the left, I have, um, well, I'm gonna talk about a few things. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is I'm just gonna do a short background on myself, just um, in case you don't know me. I do stream on Twitch on a regular basis. I stream Spin and Goes on Twitch. Uh, but if you're meeting me for the very first time, then I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. So I'll do that first. Uh, then I'm going to talk about kind of, uh, I used to play Heads Up. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of insight into why I switched from Heads Up Hyper Sit and Goes to Spin and Goes on Poker Stars. After that, I'm going to talk about how Spin and Goes are going so far. And then I'll get into what I get asked about a lot. So I'm going to talk about my September results later on in this vlog, and then I'll talk about my overall results so far, okay? So uh, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about, like I said, is um, I just wanna do a short background on myself. So as I said, my name is Courtney. I am 29 years old, I'm from British Columbia, Canada, which is on the west side of Canada. Um, I have a science degree, so I did go to school. I got a general science degree, and uh, I wasn't really someone that loved school, so even though I did finish my degree, I didn't really have a lot of interest in pursuing a career in sciences. I learned how to play poker while I was going to school. I went to the University of British Columbia, and um, yeah, started out with home games, got really addicted to poker, actually. I really, really love it. Uh, well, I loved it back then. I still love it. But anyway, back then when I first learned it, it was just amazing. I just, I loved poker so much and I really wanted to play it all the time. So I, in between home games, I got the itch and I really wanted to play it at home. So I ended up downloading Poker Stars and deposited a hundred dollars and as they say the rest is history <laughs> i started at five dollar sit and goes actually i started at 18 man sit and goes and i built up my first one thousand dollar bankroll playing sit and goes so i get asked all the time how i started um playing poker on poker stars and how how i built up my bankroll and that's how i played five dollar 18 man sit and goes with my hundred dollar deposit I did play MTTs a little bit to uh, build up my bankroll along the way, but I've mostly been a sit and go player uh, during my career um, on Poker Stars. So, how did I come to play poker for a living? I quit my job actually in 2010. So I graduated. I graduated a couple years before that, and um, then I was working in sales for a couple years. And after about my first full-time year of working in sales, I realized how much I hated it, how much I really uh, disliked the office environment. And I said, man, what can I do? I just, I really hate what I'm doing right now. I'm really unhappy. Um, maybe I should try to play poker for a living. So yeah, that's what I did. I, um, I had some money saved up. I had a good bankroll. And up until that point, I had been playing poker pretty seriously, but obviously I wasn't giving it as much time as I could have if I weren't working full time. So I decided to make the plunge. I said to myself, well, um, you know, I'm done school. I really have nothing to lose. So I'm going to, I'm going to quit my job and play poker for a living. So I played MTTs. That's what I was doing at the time. So I quit my job to play MTTs for a living. Uh, after that, that was back in 2010, um, I played MTTs for like a year, maybe a year and a half. I, um, I made enough money to pay my bills, but it, like it wasn't anything great or anything. So, and uh, there was a lot of variance. I didn't love the variance of MTTs. And um, yeah, I actually ended up switching to sit and goes. Um, thanks to some advice that I got from a really close friend. So he, he told me, well, you know, I can, I can coach you, I can teach you sit and goes, and there's a lot less variance in sit and goes. So I switched to playing sit and goes for a living after that. 
I at first I played 18 mans, which is funny because it kind of went full circle. Circle, right? I started out playing 18 man sit and goes, and then eventually I went back to them and played 18 man sit and goes for a living. After 18 mans, I switched to six max turbos. I did that for a little while, and then and then I learned how to play my favorite format of poker ever, uh, which is hyper heads up sit and goes. So I learned that um, because my friend switched to those games and he said that he could help me learn those as well. So I, uh, I switched to hyper heads up sit and goes in 2012. I eventually moved up to 200s, which is about the highest buy-in I played. I've uh, also spent some time playing turbos, so I played up to $500 turbo heads up sit and goes um but my main game was 200 hyper heads up and i played those until this past august so yeah you might wonder well what happened why did you why did you quit heads up and that's the next topic so okay let's let's uh, i'm done my short background all right and now i'm going to talk about why did i quit quit heads up because I get this question all the time. So I love heads up. I, I love it. It's my it's the favorite poker that I've ever played. Um, however, I did discover Twitch. I discovered streaming poker on Twitch. And um, I started doing that just to see if I would like it. I started doing that. I believe I, I might have done my first stream in June, but I definitely started doing it more seriously in July. So for a while, I streamed heads up and spins uh, on Twitch. Now, let me tell you, streaming heads up on Twitch, very annoying. It's, it's extremely annoying, actually. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of reasons why it's annoying. First of all, it's really annoying to wait for heads up action while you're streaming. Um, how it works on PokerStars is you sit a lobby and you wait for someone to decide to come play you. So you sit a heads up lobby, someone comes to play you, and then obviously you play. Um, the problem is that sometimes or often these days, it does take a long time to get action because heads up action is not as good as it used to be. So I was spending a lot of time on stream, waiting for heads up action and doing nothing. So, okay, spinning goes were a thing. We had $60 spinning goes at the time. So what I was doing was I was playing spinning goes in between heads up action. So when I didn't have any heads up action, I would I would play a spinning go on stream and that was kind of cool, right? But there's a couple problems with that. The first is that it's kind of annoying to switch in between lobbies. The spin and go lobby is different from the heads up lobby. So I had to switch back and forth. Um, the other thing is that sometimes when I was playing spin and goes, all of my heads up lobbies got sat at the same time. So then I was all of a sudden playing way too many tables. It was just really hard to organize how many tables I had on screen at the same time. So yeah, those are two or a few kind of annoying things about streaming heads up. Then there's a lot of reg battling at heads up. Um, I really actually like playing regs at hyper heads up. I really enjoyed the challenge. I enjoyed the competition. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and I actually was pretty decent at it. The problem is it's very consuming. It's very time consuming rather to stay decent at heads up. People are getting better all the time. The competition is getting better all the time. So in order to stay on top of my game and to make sure that I didn't regress as a player, I had to work very hard on my game all the time. And I really had to study the regs that I was playing all the time. Um, so that's very time consuming. Not only that, I can't stream reg battles on Twitch. I just can't. I cannot give all my rangers. Um, I can't make my ranges public because that is very detrimental to me. Um, obviously, my opponent could easily watch my streams and learn all my ranges, which would really hurt me. And I don't really think it's fair to the reg that I'm playing either to have um, to have our battles on stream. 
Not to mention, streaming is very distracting, and so my ROI would probably go down a lot if I were to stream reg battles on Twitch. So I was faced with a decision. I was faced with the problem that when I played Heads Up on stream, sometimes I had to play regs. And when that happened, I had to stop streaming. It was just, it was a huge problem. And I thought to myself, well, this is not good. I'm playing a lot of poker off stream. I'm not really putting as much into my stream on Twitch as I could. So I made the really, really tough decision to quit the 200 Hyper Heads Up division and move to spins full time. Um, to this day, I'm kind of sad about it. I really, like I said, I really love Hyper Heads Up. I, I really enjoyed my time there. I just, I also really love Twitch. I really love streaming. So I, I chose Twitch over Hyper Heads Up. I didn't quit Hyper Heads Up because I don't think there's money in it anymore. I definitely think the ideal situation is to play both Hyper Heads Up and spins depending on what stake you play. So I was only playing up to $200 Hyper Heads Ups. Um, which means that in order to get enough action, I had to play lower stakes heads ups or I had to play spins. I quit hyper heads up after $100 spins came out. So if I were playing hyper heads up still, I'd play 200s and $100 spins is what I would do. Um, if you play higher stakes though, obviously hyper heads ups, you might necessarily, you probably don't want to play spins. It just really depends on the stake that you play. So... Yeah, that is why I quit Hyper Heads Up. Um, I, like I said, I get questions about it all the time and it's not because I think there's no money in Hyper Heads Up. It's not because I don't like it anymore. It's just because I decided that streaming Spin and Goes was better than uh, streaming Heads Up for all the reasons I mentioned. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's it for why did I quit Heads Up. Now let's talk about how spins are going so far. Spin and goes are really fun. Honestly, actually, um, I've talked about this on my Twitch stream before, but they can be quite addictive, even for someone that plays poker for a living. So back when I was playing Hyper Heads Up, um, I would, Hyper Heads Up was my focus. So sometimes I would play um, an entire session of Hyper Heads Up. I'd be really tired at the end of all of it. And, um, you know, at the end of my session, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm done poker, but maybe I want to wind down. Maybe I want to play some games for fun. So that's when I'd load the spinning goes. And um, I sometimes get questions about how many spinning goes I play off stream. Generally speaking, like four. So you would, I would load up a set of four after the end of my heads up session and play them for fun. The thing is, though, it was never just one set. I would think to myself, okay, I'm going to play one set of spin and goes, and then I'm going, and then I'm going to be done. Then I'm going to get off the computer and um, go do something else. Go eat food or something, you know? Food is a good thing. <laughs> but um, I got so addicted. I really did. It's, it is. It's super addicting. So you spin four, maybe you get like um, three two X's and one four X and then maybe you lose a four X and it's kind of tilting. You're like, man, I can't believe I lost that four X. This is so tilting. Let's play more. And so you spin another four of them and then you spin like four two X's and you're like, what the hell? Why did I only get two X's? This is bullshit. I'm going to play another set and see if I can spin something better. And then it's even worse when you run really bad at heads up that day and you want a way to chase your losses because you know that you can easily make back everything you lost that day if you spin a good spin. Yeah, so that's how it starts. They're super addicting. They're super fun. Um, how do I like them so far? I still, I really, really still like them ever since I switched to them full time. I love them. I think they're really enjoyable. Heads Up is still my favorite, but there's a lot of Heads Up in Spin and Go, so I'm not really missing Heads Up too much. 
Um, I like how there's regular action and spins. So heads up hypers, like I said earlier, I did a lot of waiting around depending on how the action was. Sometimes, sometimes near the end of my um, stint at heads up hypers, I was in the lobby for 45 minutes and I, I wouldn't have a game. And that was pretty tilting, not gonna lie. So spinning goes, you don't have to wait that long. You can basically just register for them at will and you always have as much action as you want, which is really, really cool. Um, as for, let's say, mental game issues or whether they've been a little bit tilting so far, there is also that. Spin and goes are a lot less regular when it comes to variance than heads up. Um, I never really had huge downswings at heads up. So back when I was playing heads up hypers, probably my biggest downswing when I was only playing 200s and 100 heads up hyper, I never really lost more than $7,000 at a time. Like those are, that's a typical annoying downswing at those stakes when you're playing both recreational players and regs. Um, the more regs, obviously, the bigger downswing can be, but if you're playing a fair amount of recs, then never really more than $7,000. Um, spins, I know that my downswings are going to be bigger than that. Like, I'm only playing, I'm playing hundreds and sixties right now, and probably my biggest downswing so far, I'm in the middle of it, um, it's been $6,000 so far. But this is just the beginning. I And I haven't run that bad. I haven't run bad at all playing spins. So it's going to be really interesting to see the variance and to see how much toll um, it, or how much of a toll it takes just on the mental game. So that will be interesting for sure. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So far, I have I've had a couple like really annoying days where I've spent a, bu a bunch of multipliers and haven't been able to win many of them and ended up like negative multiple thousands of dollars because of it. Um, those days are pretty tough, but overall I think it's been okay and I'm, I'm happy playing them. So yes, that is spinning goes so far. Those are my thoughts on that. Now for what a lot of people have been waiting for, September results. So I've already talked a little bit about my results um, on my Twitch stream, but I'll go into some details right now. And um, I'm actually gonna show some poker tracker graphs. So let me just switch over here to my graph. One second. Um... <laughs> it's a problem with uh, my first ever vlog. I'm like, where is everything? How do I do it? How do I do it? All right, I think I got it now. So here's the graph. Here's the graph. And uh, let's see here. So we're talking about September results. All right, uh, what is this? This is all my games in September. So this is, uh, let's see, I played 853 games in September. Um, all right. It includes, I'm trying to figure out how many games it includes. So, okay. It includes 374 hundreds, 303 60s, and 174 30s, okay? So in September, I added 30s to my schedule or um, to my action just because there wasn't a ton of action last month due to WCOOP on Poker Stars. So a lot of people were playing MTTs instead of spins, and so I was waiting around a lot more than I wanted to be, so I added 30s. Um, keep in mind though, this was back when SpinWiz was a registration tool, now it's not. So um, SpinWiz was a program where it queued up all the people that were using the program and you were able to avoid other regulars playing spins. Um, that software is no longer allowed on PokerStars, so I'm not going to have to play 30s anymore. Uh, so just in case you're wondering why I have 30s in this graph, that is why. Now you might say, well, 30s, obviously you're going to have a higher ROI in those. You're going to have a higher chip EV. Interestingly, I didn't. I had a very terrible, 
chippy me per game playing 30s, but I'll get to that in a second. My overall results for September were very poor. Uh, my actual results, it was a very bad month. I ran tons and tons of buy-ins below EV and I ended up down for the month. Um, the good thing is that my, my EV ROI in September was very, very good. Uh, which I'm super relieved about because sometimes when you run bad for the month, you start to lose, maybe lose a little bit of confidence. So I don't really, I have a lot of confidence in my head up, heads up game, like an extreme amount of confidence in my heads up game because I spent so many years playing heads up. Three handed though, I have a lot to learn still. I basically have done almost 100% of my spins playing on stream. So if you have watched my Twitch stream from the start, basically um, from July or August, you will have seen almost 100% of my spinning goes on stream. I have been learning while streaming on Twitch. Um, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting. Um, I, I started out at a one point, mm, what was it? I think it was 1.3% EV ROI is what I had after my first month of spinning goes. I believe that's what I had. And um, yeah, I had a lot to learn. I was plus EV in them because of my heads up game, but I didn't really know what I was doing playing three handed. Now I, after a few months have gone by, I've gotten a lot better. I've really vastly improved my three handed game. So as a result, my ROI has gotten a lot better. So last month I lost a lot of money. Um, I lost a lot of real money, but my EV went up, my chips per game went up. So that is the bright side of September. Now, um, let's look at, let's look at this uh, a little bit more co closely. So um, the line at the bottom here, as you can see is my actual chips one, but my net expected chips one was a lot higher. Um, overall, my net expected chips was 41,433. That's 48.6 chips per game, which is um, an EV ROI of 4.23%, which is about what I'm aiming for. Um, it would be better if I could get it up to 5%. My variance will be a lot less if I can get it up to 5 So that's my goal, is to increase my um, chips per game a little bit more and get it up to 5%. But all things considered, um, considering how I started with spins, I can't really complain too much about 4%. Pretty happy about it. Um, I can show you my my graph for each stake separately. So let's go, let's take a look at um, hundreds first. So I played 300, and actually it's funny, if you add up, so I played 374 games of hundreds. If you add up all my 60s and my 30s, I, I get a total of 851, but my PT4 says I played 853 games, so I'm not really sure where the extra two comes from. In case you're wondering, in case you're wondering. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I played 374 hundreds. Um, and I ended up with 19,008 chips in EV. That is uh, 50.82 chips per game for an ROI of 4.66%. Now, this is a very small sample all my games this month. It's all a small sample. Whether these are my real ROIs or not, I have no idea. Chances are I ran good in ROI this month, but I am not sure. So we gotta, we definitely have to take it with a grain of salt here because a small sample, right? You really, you don't know. I don't know if this is my true ROI, but um, it's a good sign like to have this this number of chips per game after say I played um, almost a thousand games this month uh, it's a good sign it probably means I'm a winning player so uh, this was my September for hundreds 60s so let's see 60s so 60s went even better actually I played 303 60s 
I won 18,002 chips in EV. And uh, my chips per game as a result of that is 59.4 and that's 6.29%. So um, I'm pretty confident that I ran, I ran pretty hot in EV in 60s in September. Something to keep in mind is that both 100s and 60s, I play a fair amount of regs, especially at 100s. So in games where I'm playing a lot of regulars, my EV is not going to be this high. My EV is going to drop significantly. I don't know how much my EV drops when a reg is in the game. Um, I do believe that if there's two regs in my game, so it's a three reg game total, then I'm probably negative EV, but I don't know by how much. So. Um, it's a good sign that my EV is so good considering that I do play regs, but like I said, it could have been variants. I could have run hot. Um, and lastly, we'll take a look at 30s. 30s went really poorly last month. Uh, I ended up losing in real money. I think I ended up losing like close to a thousand dollars playing 30s which is a lot really if you think about it. 900 dollars playing 30 dollars spins considering my edge is insane my edge is really high in 30s i know it has to be i'm i mean i, I just have edge almost over almost every single person that plays 30 if not everyone so the fact that I only made 4,699 chips in these games, which is a chip EV per game of 27, is pretty funny. It's pretty interesting. Um, and that's just a 0.13% ROI. So I feel really grateful that last month I ran good in my higher buy-ins. And uh, when I ran really terribly, it was in 30s. EV wise. So that's kind of cool. Um, in real money, I ran bad at everything, but that's besides the point, right? <laughs> okay, okay. So those were my September results. And um, let's see, let's see. Last but not least, let's take a look at overall results. So let's see, I'm going to just change my, my filter. Let's go all dates and then I need to change to all tournament buy-ins. Okay, so in total I've played 2,264 spin and goes since I started. So this includes all games since I started playing spins. Um, as you can see, I've run pretty hot overall, so I've uh, I've won more chips than I should have so far, which is nice, which is a, a pretty nice brag. Overall, since I've started playing spins, I've made 91,400 chips over 2,264 games, which is 40.37 chips per game. Um, that is an overall ROI of, uh, I'm actually not too sure because I didn't calculate that for some reason. <laughs> if we only take though the hundreds and sixties, I've played 2,088 games at hundreds and sixties since I started playing. In total, I've made 86,984 chips at hundreds and sixties. That is 41.66 chips per game, which is 2.9% EV ROI. So that's overall since I started playing. Um, when I consider that at the start, of spins, I was playing really poorly three-handed, um, and that these results include all those games where I was just learning. I'm pretty happy with my with my EV ROI. I 2.9%. Uh, it's not where I want it to be overall. I'd like to be at a 5% ROI, like I said. But considering, like I said, that it includes all the games where I was just learning spins, I'm pretty happy about it. So uh, yeah, and since it's over, it's over 2,000 games, um, I can be pretty confident that I'm plus EV in these games. Uh, 2,000 games is not enough of a sample to really know my true EV ROI. However, it is enough to get an idea of whether I'm plus EV in the games and about how plus EV I am. So I don't know if 2.9% is my true ROI, 
probably isn't, but it's high enough where I can be pretty certain that I'm doing well enough in these games to play them for a living like I'm trying to do. So yeah, overall, it's been, it's been a good experience and I've learned a lot and I think that I will get better every single day that I play them. And so far, that's remained a fact, so I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, so anyway, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Let me just um, change back to my full screen here. Full screen, I'm back. I'm back, it's a big screen and I can unhighlight spin so far because we're not talking about this anymore. Um, I'm just gonna basically say thanks for watching. It's uh, I'm glad that you were here for episode one of the Donkey Brings vlog and uh, like I've talked about so much so far in this vlog, I do stream on Twitch. I stream five days a week and I stream mostly spinning goes. So if you are interested in watching me play live, please do visit me on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Cordy I will have a link also down below if you want to just click that because that's a lot easier, right? <laughs> you can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, I talk about a lot of things on Twitter. Mostly I I mention when I'm going live. I mention when my schedule is changing, that kind of thing. So uh, please follow me on Twitter as well, at Cordy B. And if you have any comments or questions about this vlog, please do leave a comment or question and I'll be happy to answer you there. Not only that, if you can't get enough of me, <laughs> um, I do keep a, uh, a regular blog, so donkeybrainspoker.com. And last but not least, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to me on uh, YouTube here, it would really help me out. So um, like, my, like my vlog and subscribe to me on YouTube, and I will be eternally grateful to you. So... Yes, thank you very much for doing that in advance. So thank you for watching. Again, I really appreciate it. And um, I will tweet the next time I post episode two. So Donkey Brings vlog episode two, I'll tweet about it. Or of course, if you're subscribed to me here on YouTube, you will hear about it. So until then, see you next time. Have a great day and uh, bye. <laughs>